All right, this is Stephanie Huff, and we are continuing with metabolism, and this lecture is going to be on osteoporosis. Just an overview of osteoporosis. Um, it has also been defined as porous bones. Osteoporosis is a metabolic bone disorder characterized by loss of bone mass, increased bone fragility, and increased risk of fat fractures. The reduced bone mass is caused by an imbalance in the processes that influence bone growth and maintenance. Most often it is associated with aging and inadequate calcium intake. Looking at the pathophysiology and etiology, until the age of 35, um, which is the time of peak bone mass, formation um, occurs more rapidly than resorption. The exact pathophysiology is unclear. Um, it is known to involve an imbalance in the activity of osteoblast. Osteoblast um, are what form new bone and osteoclast activity, which is osteoclast resorb bone. Osteoporosis affects the diaphysis, which is the shaft of the bone, and the metaphysis, which is the portion of bone between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, which is the growth plate. As it progresses, the trabeculae are lost from the cancerous bone, and this is the spongy tissue of bone and the outer cortex thins to the point where even minimal stress will fracture the bone. A lot of times these loss is accelerated if their diet is deficient in vitamin D and calcium. In females, bone loss increases after menopause with loss of estrogen, then slows but doesn't stop at the age of 60 years of age. Looking at the etiology, it is estimated that 57 million Americans have low bone mass or osteoporosis. Although it can happen at any age in both um, men and women. 80% are older women that are affected. One in two women and one in four men will have osteoporosis related fractures. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure that they don't have throw rugs or other obstacles in their house that could cause them to fall. Because if they do fall, then the chances of them fracturing things is going to be um, increased. Some of the risk factors depends on bone mass um, achieved between the ages of 25 and 35. And afterward, um, how much bone mass is lost. Certain diseases, lifestyle habits, and ethnicities will increase their risk. Unmodifiable risk factors um, is going to be personal history of fracture after the age of 50. Family history, age and gender, females um, are at increased risk. Thin um, females and are having a small frame are also at increased risk. Looking at ethnicity, European Americans and Asian females are higher risk. Other chronic diseases could be endocrine um, diseases like hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, Cushing's disease, or diabetes. All of those are at high risk for development of osteoporosis. Patients with moderate to severe asthma or severe allergies who frequently take steroids are also at greater risk. Your other conditions could be Turner syndrome, uh, growth hormone deficiencies, osteogenesis imperfecta, and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes. Current low, low bone mass in children are those with decreased mechanical loading, um, such as patients that have spina bifida or cerebral palsy, 
that interferes with ambulation and have limited um, pressure on their bones. Some of your modifiable risk factors are your female athletes, um, especially those that have an emphasis on leanness like gymnastics and cross-country running. They are at increased risk um, due to a triad of health problems um, in these roles. They usually have um, disorganized um, eating, low bone mass, and amenorrhea. Menopause and decreased estrogen levels um, causes bone loss to accelerate. So estrogen um, enhances the calcium absorption and stimulates thyroid to secrete calcitonin, which is a hormone that suppresses osteoclast activity and increases osteoblast um, activity. Calcium deficiency, um, calcium is essential for bone formation. High intake um, in diet with high um, phosphate content will, will deplete calcium if they have too much um, phosphate in their diet. Also, um, diet sodas usually have high phosphorus um, levels as well, and that also decreases um, calcium. Acidosis may result from high protein diet, which contributes to osteoporosis. Also, um, Calcium is withdrawn from bones as the kidneys try to buffer the acid, and this directly stimulates the osteoclast, so it starts breaking down those bones. Substance abuse, um, this could be from cigarette smoking and excessive alcohol intake. Smoking does decrease blood supply to the bone. Nicotine slows the production of osteoblast and impairs calcium absorption. Alcohol has a direct effect on osteoblast activity, suppressing bone formation. Sedentary lifestyle, um, they need weight-bearing exercises to increase blood flow to the bones and increase osteoblast activity um, and growth. Medications, prolonged use of aluminum-containing antacids and anticonvulsants. Heparin therapy um, also increases bone resorption. Your antiviral therapy for HIV and AIDS. Um, glucocorticoid use for greater than three months also puts them at risk. So we talked about how um, smoking will increase the risk of osteoporosis. All right, and so here is access um, leads to osteoporosis, and so it looks at your alcohol use, corticosteroids, low calcium, low estrogen, smoking, and sedentary lifestyle. Looking at clinical manifestations, loss of height occurs in the vertebral as the um, vertebral bodies collapse. It is most common with a progressive curvature of the spine. Osteoporosis is often called a silent disease because bone loss occurs um, without symptoms. Along with loss of height, they will have a characteristic dorsal kyphosis and cervical lordosis um, that develops, and this um, accounts for what's known as dowager's hump, is often associated with aging. The abdominal area will protrude and the hips and knees will flex as the body tries to maintain its center of gravity. They will have low back pain and fractures, um, especially in the forearm, spine, or hip. Fractures are your most common complication of osteoporosis. 
Um, a lot of times it may not be obvious until um, a fracture occurs that they have osteoporosis. Pharmacology for prevention uh, and treatment are going to be hormonal agents like your biophosphonates um, and selective estrogen receptor modulators. Um, estrogen replacement therapy produces, um, or excuse me, reduces uh, bone loss. It increases bone density in the spines and hips and reduces the risk of fractures in postmenopausal women. And so this is showing you how the bones um, look for normal bone matrix versus osteoporosis and the, that's why it's called that porous um, bone disease. And so this is that camel hump that you may see with that kyphosis. All right, and then the effects of your osteoporosis as well. And then this is showing you that bone loss and how they can have compression fractures as those vertebrae um, basically collapse on each other. All right, collaboration. Um, the care is going to focus on stopping or slowing the process, alleviating symptoms, and preventing complications. Proper nutrition and exercise are going to be uh, very important. Diagnostic test. There's a dual energy x-ray um, absorptiometry, which is also known as DEXA scan. This measures the bone density in the lumbar spine or hip. It is considered highly accurate. An ultrasound of the heel to measure bone density. It is a one-minute scan. It's not as accurate as a DEXA scan, but it is accurate enough for screening purposes. Lab tests that can be done are an alkaline phosphatase. It may be increased following a fracture. Serum bone GLA protein. Um, this is osteocalcin. Um, it is used as a marker for osteoclast activity and therefore is an indicator of bone turnover. It is more useful in evaluating the effectiveness of treatment than um, to indicate the severity of the osteoporosis disease itself. So this is a DEXA scanner for bone density. And so again, it is a non-invasive um, test for osteoporosis. And then this kind of shows you the image that they will get. So your bone scans are results as T-scores, um, and so that's how the, these DEXA scans are recorded. So your T-score is a comparison of the person's bone density with that of a healthy 30-year-old of the same sex. So your lower scores are more negative, mean lower bone density. So a T-score of negative 1 to a negative 2.5 signifies osteopenia meaning below normal bone density without full osteoporosis. So a T-score of negative 2.5 or lower qualifies as osteoporosis. So multiplying that T-score by 10% gives a rough estimate of how much bone density has been lost. All right, so physical therapy. So nurse is going to collaborate with a physical therapy to help, physical therapist to help design appropriate exercise programs. Um, this is going to be especially important for those that have comorbid um, conditions that limit exercise like COPD and asthma. Clients that have balance problems um, may benefit with Tai Chi or yoga. Both um, benefit people um, with osteoporosis. If they're working, um, with female athletes, they need to discuss amenorrhea and eating disorders and counseling. Um, and they also usually need nutrition referrals as well. So this is looking at your osteoporosis um, and exercise. They need good weight bearing exercises um, to help strengthen those bones. All right, and so um, walking does good. A lot of times they'll include some hand weights as well 
Um, swimming is not a good exercise because there's no weight bearing involved in that. All right, looking at their dietary management, they need to choose healthy foods. Those are that are high in calcium and vitamin D. Your calcium rich foods are going to be dairy, uh, vegetables, um, and beans. And so a lot of times they'll try to start this with before they develop um, osteoporosis to try to help prevent it. Um, once they have been diagnosed, they will continue to use these dietary management uh, to help. Your, um, they do have enriched orange juice, breakfast cereals, and breads that are supplemented with um, calcium compounds. Your foods that are going to be higher in vitamin D are going to be your fish. They do have some that are enriched um, with vitamin D. They'll put extra vitamin D in milk, cereal, and bread as well. Um, supplements may be needed of calcium and vitamin D to make sure that they have an adequate supply in the body. All right, and this is just reminding you high calcium foods, exercise regularly, don't smoke. All right, <clears throat> so looking at pharmacologic therapy, um, it is for calcium supplements, it is recommended for female adults um, 50 years of age and older get at least 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams a day of calcium. Calcium supplementation like calcium gluconate is used to treat and prevent it is best taken with meal or within an hour of meals. Um, there is a risk of hypercalcemia by taking too much. Um, and these will give you symptoms of lethargy, drowsiness, weakness, headache, anorexia, nausea and vomiting, increased urination, and thirst. Calcium supplements are contraindicated with digoxin, tetracyclines, and calcium channel blockers. It is recommended that the vitamin D dosage be 80 to 1,000 a, a international units. All right, some of your hormonal agents. You've got your calcitonin, which can be human or salmon-based. Reloxifene hydrochlor hydrochloride is Evista. Teriparatide is Fortio. There is a table on 802, um, it's table 12-14, it has the uses, routes, dosage, and side effects of each and one of these. Your biophosphates are the most commonly um, drug class that is prescribed for treating osteoporosis. So you got your alandronate sodium, which is Fosamax, etidronate disodium, which is didronel, um, both of those are injectables. Others are Beniva, Actinel, there are several others. Um, your biophosphonates will inhibit bone reabsorption by suppressing osteoclast activity, thus increasing bone density and in decreasing the incidence of fractures. Their adverse, adverse effects are GI problems such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and esophageal irritation. So these are your recommended dosage of calcium based on age. And you can see how they increase basically as you age. Um, and then pregnant and nursing mothers are going to need um, more as well. Nursing process. Um, osteoporosis is both preventable and treatable. So focus is on planning and implementing interventions to prevent the disease, its manifestations, and the resulting injuries. For people less than 35 years of age, health promotion activities to prevent or slow um, the disease um, itself. Focus should be on calcium intake, exercise, and health-related behaviors. Assessment. 
looking at their health history. Um, you're looking at history of fractures, smoking history, alcohol intake, medications that they're currently on, their usual diet. You want to also look at their menstrual history, um, including menopause, their usual activity um, and exercise, any low back pain that could indicate some of those compression fractures. Looking at the age and risk factors. Also looking at ex uh, physical examination, looking at their height and spinal curves. Diagnosis. These are, these are your Ananda diagnosis for osteoporosis. Planning goals may include that the client will participate in weight-bearing exercise for 30 minutes a day at least four times a week. Have bone density evaluated every other year. Making sure they get sufficient nutrition, especially calcium and vitamin D through diet and or supplements. They should be able to discuss risk factors and how to prevent them. Those at risk for injury um, should be able to um, modify their home, work environments to avoid injuries and minimize the risk of falling. Implementation, uh, preventing injury. You want to implement safety precautions, avoid restraints um, on hospitalized or long-term care facility clients if possible because that could increase their risk of falling. Need to make sure that these safety precautions for the patient um, in the hospital as well as long-term care, um, different things like bed and lowest position, use side rails as needed, nighttime lighting to the toilet. Um, most falls are preventable. You also want to encourage them to use their assistive devices to maintain um, independence in their activities of daily living. Teach the older clients about safety and fall precautions, assessing the home for safety um, issues and fall risk. And that's kind of like stuff we've talked about before with throw rugs and electrical um, wiring um, in the way, in the path. Looking at implementation. Um, promoting balanced nutrition. You want to teach women, these can be adolescents, pregnant, or lactating women as well, um, as men threat through the age 35 about calcium needs and foods that are high in calcium. They're going to need about 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams a day. Encourage postmenopausal women to maintain calcium intake um, at 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. You want to teach clients about medication use. Um, you want to make sure that they are um, taking them at the proper time, possible side effects. Calcium carbonate, which is Tums, should be taken 30 to 60 minutes before meals to allow adequate absorption. Calcium citrate should be taken with meals to prevent GI distress. Calcium supplements um, are taken two to three times a day for improved distribution. You want to inform clients that calcium absorption requires sufficient levels of vitamin D. So if they're only taking calcium, um, basically they're just kind of wasting their time. All right, relieving acute pain. Um, it is suggested that application of heat may temporarily relieve pain. Um, but to avoid rebound pain, they need to remove the heat every 20 to 30 minutes. I'll suggest over-the-counter anti-inflammatories for acute and chronic pain, um, but caution is not to exceed the recommended dosage of those medications. Encouraging exercise. Um, ensure safety before starting exercise program by consulting their health care provider. Teaching clients about weight-bearing exercises um, for sustained periods, 30 to 40 minutes, um, at least three times a week. Determine the, um, let's see, weight bearing does promote bone growth. Walking is easy and low impact. Swimming, including walking on the bottom, does not require needed weight bearing, um, so it's not a good activity. Determine the client's interest and help. Um, plan exercise regimens in sync with their preferences. 
that will usually make them more compliant. You want to promote healthy behaviors, including smoking cessation, um, avoiding and limiting excessive alcohol intake, limit caffeine intake to two to three cups of coffee each day. Education. Expected outcomes may include client identifies, implements, um, and implements strategies to change or modify their lifestyle like smoking cessation, including weight-bearing activities and uh, moderation of alcohol intake. Client achieves adequate calcium intake. Client will identify and eliminate safety hazards, and the client experiences relief from acute pain. And this is the end of osteoporosis, and as always, if you have questions, um, let me know and I'll try to help clarify anything.